Hello, Lesson Hacker channel subscribers. Well, it's been a long time since I've talked to you or published a video on this site, and that's because I'm now working for Replit, where I'm a constant feature on their YouTube channel. However, as we get closer to exam season, I'm back to bring you a bunch of cool stuff to help you with computer science, A-level, GCSE, and pretty much anything. But today we're going to look at a way of making your WJC NEA, your non-exam assessment, much more straightforward using an old NEA and ChatGPT. Yes, that's right, it's ChatGPT versus a non-exam assessment. So before we start, I just want to say I'm not going to be showing you how to cheat in this video. In your NEA, you should have no access to the internet, you should only have access to your own files on a protected account, and that account should be disabled between lessons. But that said, if this was a maths exam, and you got to sit in a maths exam for an hour, and then go home and come back the next day for another hour, I'm sure you'd do the best you possibly could, because you'd have time to go and look things up. The problem with coding and developing software is that you can get stuck in a mire and find it very difficult to understand where you're going next. Well, using a past paper NEA, I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT to help you and prompt you to build the code you need. We're going to start with one of the classic NEAs from the past few years, Quick Delivery Parcel Service. Now this NEA wasn't actually examined because it happened during one of the COVID years, so my students actually did this NEA and completed it, but couldn't submit it for any marks. Sorry guys. Also though, let's be honest, WJC haven't got a lot of imagination about what to do in an NEA. They're all broadly similar, and all broadly, the similar level of boring. Yes, WJC, because do you know what 15 year olds like? Delivery companies, they're fascinating. I hope you notice my sarcasm there. Anyway, let me show you a little trick to get you started. Now, we're gonna be giving ChatGPT a bunch of information at the same time. If you were to copy and paste this entire page in, then ChatGPT would throw a bit of a hissy fit. It's also very commonly overloaded at the moment. So you probably struggle a little bit to get it to answer all this in one go. What we've got to do is play clever with it. And what I'm going to do is this. Just like I would with a person, I'd say, look, here's a scenario, read it, let me know when you understand it. And I'm going to do that to ChatGPT by typing, here's some information about a scenario, when you understand it, reply with, understood, ready to go. And then what I'm going to do is just highlight or copy and paste everything in the scenario that explains the concept. I'm going to paste that in there. Remember, if you want a new line in this, you press shift and enter so you can get a new line without sending the information to ChatGPT. That's very helpful. I'm also going to try and put in the tables that the WJC give you to give you an example of the sort of information you might want to store. Now, luckily for us, ChatGPT understands markdown syntax. Markdown is a way of supplying things in plain text that have formatting. I'm going to go and take these tables and use a markdown table generator to turn them into markdown tables. That way, I can paste them in. I'm going to give some context, though. I'm just going to tell it, you only need to consider the four locations in this table and paste it in. I'm also going to tell it that the costs in the table below are the ones that we care about. And I'm going to send that. Now ChatGPT will think about this for a few minutes and tell you, understood, ready to go. That means it now understands the context of the NEA. Now, of course, you won't have access to the NEA information that you're currently working on. So if you're doing this at home, you're unlikely to be able to give it all the context you might want. But give it the context that you can remember. Now, what we need to do is break down the instructions a bullet point at a time. WJC are very good at giving us a broken down set of instructions. So let's start asking ChatGPT to do that. I'm gonna take the first point and I'm gonna to add to it two things. The first thing is ChatGPT is trained on a wealth of knowledge. And if I ask it to make a program for me, it's going to use the most advanced, the highest level understanding it has of programming to build that in the easiest way. That's not ideal for you studying GCSE because there's one concept that ChatGPT loves to use that you probably don't know about and certainly shouldn't have been taught yet, and that's object-oriented programming. Now, if you want to know a little bit about it, I've got a section in it in my 100 Days of Code Python course on the Replit website, 
which is a brilliant way to learn programming if your teacher's a bit naff or you're self-studying or you just like staring at a big bald dude for hours and hours every day. Who am I to judge? So one of the things we need to tell ChatGPT is, look, don't use OOP, Object Oriented Programming, because otherwise it'll give us code that's far too high a level for us to even understand. I'm also gonna ask it to give me the code in my language of choice. Now, for about half of you, that would be Python, and that's happy days. I'm gonna use Python here as an example because it's just nicer to talk about. For those of you that are unfortunately being forced to do everything in Visual Basic, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but ChatGPT will have a good go at it for you if it can. So with context given, I'm gonna click go and see ChatGPT give me an example of the first part of the program. And it's doing a good job here. Give me the first slice of the program. And you know what? If I was going in tomorrow to start my NEA, I'd have a good place to start. Now, you can't go and memorize this code, okay? This code is an example of something you could use. It's a starting point and it's too difficult to memorize code anyway. But it gives you an idea about what you should be building and how it should work. And certainly, that's a step in the right direction. It'll also, hopefully, give you a bit of information about how it constructed it and what it's thinking, which is good for the context. Now, you can't ask your teacher for help on this. You can't talk about it outside of school. But if you need some guidance, if you need to be pushed in the right direction, this is great. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next bullet point now, and I'm just gonna start with add some code to and copy and paste the next bullet point in. And it goes off and gives me more code. Well, that's amazing. That does mean now I've got a basic idea of how to do that. Now, it's doing it in quite a fancy way here. If I'm not sure how that works, I could always ask for simpler code, simplify the code, make it easier to understand, make it more readable. But the basics are there. And again, it's given me a bit of a description about what it's trying to do and what it's trying to build, which might give me a good starting place. Now, specifically, it said that it didn't do validation and error handling. There are marks for that in the mark scheme. So if I wanted to know how validation might work in this program, let's ask ChatGPT. And it's given us some nice ideas of validation, which I can probably rip off and try and build myself in tomorrow's lesson. It's overkill, certainly, but it gives you some ideas. Here's a little tip as well. ChatGPT sometimes gets overloaded on long output and just gives up. If you just ask it to finish that, it'll finish the sentence for you. Sometimes it does it in weird ways as it has here, but it should work. I go to the next point now. And again, this is the code to store an invoice. Now I'm looking at this and it's stored it in dictionary just in RAM and that's fine. But I know that later on I'm gonna to have to retrieve it. I think it's more likely that I probably should have stored it in a file. So I'm just gonna ask it, can you do that again and store it in a file? And it'll change its mind, it'll mix things up a little bit, and it'll show you how to store it in a file. And it's done it in a really nice way here of just dumping the file into a JSON file, which is really, really nice. And again, this is all about getting ideas. You will not be able to do this exact same thing at home because you will not have the complete NEA page. You should not be taking that out of the room. In order to comply with the exam conditions, that should remain in the room at all times, or at least as a PDF file in your lockdown account in school. But if you can explain generally what the problem is you're trying to solve, ChatGPT can point you in the right direction. And if you can give it the constraints you're working with, it can help you out a lot more than your teacher can because they're not allowed to. Okay, I'm gonna add the last one now. That looks pretty good. There's some interesting stuff going on there. It's working in multiple parts, but again, it explains it in a reasonable way. And actually, this might give me ideas of stuff I can build and I'd go and practice it myself. Again, it stopped halfway through a sentence. I'm gonna ask it to finish off. Let's finish it off for me there. One thing the WJC never say in this scenario page, but always have in their mark scheme is the fact that there should be validation, which we've already covered, and there should be an authentication system. In other words, usernames and passwords. People never think about this because when they're building the NEA themselves, they just don't think to do it because it's not part of the specification, but it is in the mark scheme. By the way, you're allowed to see the mark scheme. Go and ask for it if you've not seen it or get it from the WJC website. So I'm just gonna ask it to add a simple login system to the code and explain a little bit about how that's gonna work. And it's built me a very simple login system and it's even told me where to put my existing code, so to put it before what I've already got. And it's even defined it. 
Now at this point in working in NEA, this usually covers maybe the first 10 hours of your time. The build should roughly be half the time because you're doing that in exam conditions. Again, you can't use ChatGPT in the exam conditions, but it's a great resource for asking questions and trying to solve problems yourself when you get home. Have you been stuck on a password system all day? Go home, ask it how to do it, ask it more questions, ask it to simplify it. That will help you get things understood. Is there a phrasing in the NEA that you're not sure about? Do you not know what recall details means? Well, ask it to build some code to do it. And ChatGPT is also often pretty good at summarizing it. You could even ask it, what does this mean? And it'll give you an answer. In the next video, we're gonna look at how we can start using ChatGPT to help us understand how we could write the report and to give us an example of the sort of thing that we might wanna be talking about in those sessions. This is really good because the report structure is very complicated to get high marks in, and it's also really complicated to remember what they mean by each section. ChatGPT can give you a good summary and understandings of what they should look like in advance. Don't forget, we are not using this for cheating. This is support only. But if your teacher gives you a mock NEA, <laughs> I said nothing, I said nothing. ChatGPT and large language models are the future of education. They're like having your own personal tutor at home with you or in the classroom if your school hasn't blocked it. It is 100% a technology that you should be using to help you develop your understanding and perform better in something like an NEA or an exam. So use it. It's free at the moment if it's not too congested on a Sunday night. Come back for the next video when we all look at how ChatGPT can help us with the report.